uh, a non-transparent regime. The abuses of power to the freedoms and the treatment of people in Iran is evident to all. You do not have to be in the intelligence world to see these things. Whether it's the ears, the eyes, or the muscles of the people working on behalf of the regime to make sure that everybody stays tightly under control through their way of doing things, uh, it is evident that these things are happening. We have seen this sadly with uprisings, manifestations of the desire of freedom to get out and do things. People like me who are old enough to remember Hungary and Tiananmen Square don't want to see this repeated again. We don't want to encourage people to go out and become casualties unless there's a follow-on. There needs to be an additional force. I very much agree that the third way that has been proposed uh, in this group is a way that must be undertaken. you understand that. And energizing the opposition and the resistance is, is of course the right thing to do. Iranians must solve Iranian problems. But Iranians who are solving Iranian problems may need assistance. And people who are in a position to give them the right assistance should exactly be doing that. My second obstacle I wanted to talk briefly about was United States policy. And again, I'm going to try a euphemism here. I would call our foreign policy these days well-intentioned, but rather unsettled. Others would call it indecisive and uncertain and causing us serious problems. I go briefly to the negotiation on the news. How many times have we been sort of strung along and sucked into negotiations that have failed? We are not being told the truth. Now again, you do not have to be an intelligence officer. I have seen people 